YouTube, check it out. I got uh, two deliveries this morning. We got the new air compressor along with a small load of firewood. <laughs> we'll ditch the unnecessary pallets. Take this off. Oh, it's beautiful. I bought a really huge air compressor. This thing puts out, I want to say about 25 or so CFM, and the one in the shop is only like 13. So, yeah, um, really big step up. Yeah, this looks, uh, this looks like a pretty serious compressor, if you ask me. And as far as I'm concerned, the only small engines worth owning are the Honda engines, and if you want something really informal and not important like a go-kart or something that's just for fun that you're not really counting on, then the good quality Honda clones are worth having. Uh, so I, I basically paid extra for this. It wasn't an option for this compressor, but I chose this compressor over some of the ones with the Honda clones. Massive, massive pump. I mean, that thing is just obscene. So there's all this safety stuff in here, and I'm not really seeing anything that actually pertains to the use of the compressor, and I'm already more than 10 pages into the manual. Run the air compressor for 30 minutes to seat the rings and lubricate all internal surfaces. Yeah, so receiving this thing wasn't the smoothest operation ever, because like I said, I bought this thing on Amazon, because why not? They actually had the best price I could find on anything remotely like this, delivered straight to my door. What's not to love, right? T-Stage must purchase an extended warranty kit. That's a huge pet peeve of mine. I really wish companies wouldn't do that. Either give the damn thing a warranty or don't. Don't charge someone two grand for something that's supposed to be pretty good based off your brand name. And be like, oh, well, the only way we're going to cover this for a reasonable amount of times is if you give us another probably several hundred dollars. So, yeah, not too thrilled about that. Oh, this thing's got some resistance to it. That is like, the, oh, I guess I should probably set this to the on position. I guess that's what happens when it's like twice the size of the, uh, the pressure washer motor. 390 instead of 212 or 220 or something. Ah, yeah, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt to put gas in this. Getting all excited about my toy. <laughs> hey, wonder why, wonder why the motor won't run. to work YouTube that thing is surprisingly loud my ears are ringing a little bit but uh, aside from normally operating this thing with uh, with earplugs it seems to be working really well you know fired right up pump makes a little bit of noise it, uh, it almost sounded like something was knocking a little bit but I think that's just the two cylinders compressing things because I would rest my fingers up here and there's a steady rhythm here that's the exact same as the sound you hear so I think that's just the the pumps there pumping away uh, it's not transferable. There's like pages and pages in here of stuff that's not covered and uh, you Very minimal warranty. Let's put it that way there. Uh, it looks like DeWalt is selling this largely based on their brand name alone uh, Don't really care for that too much, but a lot of the time when you go to buy something nowadays That's how it is. However, I kind of expected this in the first place And I didn't buy this thing because it was a DeWalt brand compressor. I bought it if anything a little bit in spite of that and um, I was really just looking for a sturdy pump that was supposedly going to hold up really well and a Honda engine and about 30 gallon tank and this compressor that I bought off Amazon it seemed to fit the bill quite nicely. Now we're into all the other languages so we've gone from all of this to just this and let's see we're just we're going to narrow this down to the actual useful part of the manual which quite frankly isn't much of it this thing is a pain to have to dig through. Alright so now we start in the all the various warnings, don't need that, this is common sense, don't smoke when you're pouring in gasoline, don't asphyxiate yourself, risk of injury to property, not even reading that, unsafe operation, oh, here we go, great. So we've gone from the entire manual to this much of it, and I'm gonna staple this together, and uh, we're gonna recycle most of the manual here, and then we're gonna go pick up some, uh, some stuff in town. of importation 2006 revision 42 that's a funny way to spell kindling <laughs> all right uh, let's see negative battery cable goes to the frame positive goes to the starter solenoid 
and hopefully when I turn this, it'll engage the starter thing and it'll fire up. Carbonara gouging, as a lot of my regular viewers already know, is basically when you take a big old torch like this and it uses these uh, graphite electrodes and the way this works is if I was going to gouge through this tabletop here, you know, the electrode carries a huge amount of electrical current. We're going to be using a 325 amp engine drive to power this and then you press this button and it releases a huge volume of air. So what happens is the electrode melts the material on top of this thing, the air scoops in and just blows the material away. This takes a massive volume of air. My shop compressor is about 13 CFM and it will barely keep up with this thing. I mean, you have to gouge a little, then stop and wait for it to recharge. Gouge a little, stop and wait for it to recharge. Not a very efficient use of time. And this is one reason why I wanted to buy the big engine drive air compressor. You can actually hear this uh, manual uh, pressure release valve releasing the pressure that's being built up as the pump continues to spin with the engine at idle. Very, very intuitive system. some of it so I've had worse oil changes. On the plus side it looks like this little Honda engine's pretty clean because uh, clean running because this oil's still almost clear. But again we didn't really expect it to be dirty. We're just uh, changing it so hopefully we flush out any debris from the manufacturing process which is still in the engine. Regardless, the components that make up this compressor really do look quite nice and well put together. You got heavy seal construction everywhere, beautiful welds on the pressure vessel. They give you a great engine, what looks like a pretty awesome pump, even a nice uh, rabbit cage here guard. It's just the little things that really could be made up, but overall I'm still very, very happy with this, uh, this unit. Like I said, just a couple little things I would change about it, but it really looks like the folks at DeWalt put together an awesome unit. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, so we'll just put our little dipstick in there. And you know what? I think this actually about completes my video. Alrighty, lads. So I still own this machine. It's currently 2022 as I'm filming this, uh, re-editing this update here, trying to get the original video down from like 31 or 37 minutes. I don't know why I talked so much back then. Anyway, uh, I still own this compressor. It's been great. The only thing it's needed is the system which causes the engine to accelerate or alternatively that idles it back down once the air tank is charged up. Uh, that actuator, I had to take it apart and mess with it one time. I don't remember if there was like some uh, dust that got in there or if something just rattled loose, but yeah, I just had to fidget with it so it would actuate the, uh, the engine at the correct air pressure. It, it wasn't a big deal at all. Uh, so basically, it's been flawless. I've been running DeWalt synthetic compressor, um, compressor oil in the actual pump itself. 
Uh, the Honda motor's been fine. Everything about it's been good. Uh, yeah, really happy with this thing. I love having an engine-driven air compressor. It puts out a lot more air than my shop compressor, like I said, so what I would generally do is uh, is use that for most things, and then when I have to really run the one-inch drive impact or do carbon arc gouging, fire this thing up. It's great to take on the road. I've used it working on heavy equipment, doing service calls and such. Uh, yeah, would not want to be without a compressor like this. They still sell this exact one, but like I said, it's like four grand now, so eh, there's probably better options out there. I looked at the Harbor Freight one. That's only like 1700 bucks as of when I'm filming this. That might be something to consider. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the market, okay? But this compressor is great. Uh, very happy with it. Um, yeah, I would not want to go back to not having an engine-driven air compressor. But thank you for watching over all these years.